at one point floated by the UK government as a magic bullet to defeat COVID-19. It's called herd immunity and in a moment we'll be joined by infectious disease expert Sanjay Sanayaki who will tell us whether the plan could work for Australia but first here's an explainer. Polio, AIDS, mumps, rubella. Diseases Australians no longer have to worry about. That's because of a concept called herd immunity, where the majority of people become immune to a disease, increasing a population's resistance to future outbreaks. For herd immunity to work in the case of COVID-19, it would require close to 60% of the population to have already suffered from the virus and recovered. The problem, there's still no immunisation available, but early indications show that COVID-19 patients can't get the disease again. So if the majority of Australians were to contract the virus and then recover, they could theoretically become immune. But are we prepared to deliberately infect an entire country to save lives? And Dr Sanjaya Senanayaka is an infectious disease expert at the Australian National University and he joins us now from Canberra. Very good morning to you. Hi Ali, how are you? Really well, thank you. Now this idea, I mean it was first floated in the UK but I mean it was quickly rejected when the number of cases soared and people started dying. Why mm. would we even consider it here? Oh, look, it, it is a terrible idea. It might happen naturally, but it shouldn't happen deliberately. And the issues with it, as you correctly said in that lead up or lead in, is that about 60 to 70 per cent of the population would have to become naturally infected for herd immunity to occur, for the other 30 to 40 per cent not to get infected. Now, if you look at uh, our Australian population, that means about uh, 160,000, if we say 1% is the case face fatality rate, uh, 160,000 people would die. If we be really conservative, it might be 16,000. And if you look at the US, New York State, they're having 800 people die a day, so that would mm. take about three weeks. That would overwhelm intensive care units. And then there'd be about between 30 to 300,000 people admitted to hospital. Our health system couldn't cope. OK, um, you know what's really interesting uh, about what you said, I reckon, is that it's that fine line between natural and deliberate, and, and I think our, our medical authorities have mm. been very, very at pains to point out that, that they're not doing it deliberately. However, there have been these ideas of certain states opening up um, and opening up for business, but also letting this thing run a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, so I think we're in the situation where we might think that we're running the, running the show, but the reality is the virus is dictating what we do mm. because this is a new virus. It's all over the world. It's pervading societies. So we really just have to watch and see what the virus is doing. And you're right, perhaps at some stage, maybe when we have a trickle of cases over a number of days, such as five cases a day over a week, Perhaps the government might think about uh, limiting some restrictions, but it will be a very hard call. The mm. issue you've got, if, if herd immunity isn't something that can be on the table and you've got a vaccine that is 12 to 18 months away, if they even find one, is there, is there a middle ground? Is there an option here to, like, to slowly infect the healthy so you keep the vulnerable safe? So I guess you sort of basically call it very targeted isolation. So that is, in fact, what they were initially speaking about in the United Kingdom. Let's mm. keep all the elderly, the most vulnerable at home and let's let everyone go back to work, shake hands, hug, go to the beaches, etc. But even that best-case scenario I talked about, say 0.1% instead of 1% of the population dying, it would still be 16,000 young, healthy people dying and maybe 30-odd thousand being hospitalised. Our health system wouldn't cope. So I think ethically, ethically, morally and in terms of our resources, it would not be a good idea. The hard thing is, too, we don't know what this virus is going to do individually. It can have mm. such catastrophic um, consequences, can't it? Um, Doctor, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate your expertise.